It's almost the end of another long, hot, arduous day on the mustering camp. Time to give the stock horses their daily ration of oats. Good day, Alex. Huge day, Cookie. Yeah. Really Random three or four thousand wins. Nearly at the end. It's nearing the end of the dry season in Australia's top end, and the dust is swirling. On this stock camp at Mambaloo Station, about an hour's drive from Catherine, this year's calves are being mustered and branded. Soon the young jackaroos and the one jillaroo will turn their own thoughts to dinner. Dan McIntosh, known to all as Cookie, has been feeding hungry workers in outback woolsheds and stock camps for more than 30 years. Well, in the camp I do all the cooking and that, and every now and then I duck over the yards if I need a hand or anything over there, you know, working the race or something. They love their tucker and that, because you know, they're young and they work hard and that. Yeah, and, they, and I believe if you work hard, you know, you feed them hard. But that's not the only thing this 52-year-old knockabout has on the boil. A few weeks back in Darwin, 400 kilometres to the north, Dan McIntosh had the official launch of his book, featuring photographs of rural Australia taken by him and others. The book arose from a staggering response to his foray into social media. He's come into my world purely through his Facebook page, which only came into the course of researching another book. So a photographer had suggested to me that there was this new page that lots of people were posting things on and it was worth looking at. I didn't know Dan then, but I quickly found it very addictive, you know, because it's like these people are living a completely different life from me. And I'm finding out things that I don't necessarily find out through the newspapers, the joyous things as well as the tough things of being in the bush. So I, I just thought, we could do a book with this. Surely we can do a book with this. If it wasn't Thank for you. Bridgeta, this wouldn't have happened. When Bridgeta rang me, I thought it, at the first few seconds, I thought it was a prank. <laughs> yeah. I love anything to do with Outback Australia. I've, I never go there, so it's kind of like... It's my voyeuristic thing. And I just Facebook messaged Dan and he got back to me the next day and said, yeah, book sounds great, what do we do? A great surprise, it still hasn't, the shock hasn't hit me, you know. I just can't believe it, you know. Just, I can still remember the day and the date and everything. I sat down and started that page and never in a million years would you think that it'd become a book. Yeah, and it was the first book ever made on a Facebook page in the world, actually. The community Facebook site went viral so to speak. It was after the first week I had a thousand likes, like a thousand members and after three months I had 40,000 and then a world audience of 30 million and you know that was just amazing and now we've put up around 1.9 million photos in 12 months and it's just incredible, yeah, no, it's just hard to believe, yeah. Not bad for a bloke who till last year had never used a computer and whose sole aim was to share his photos with a select few family and friends. When he was overwhelmed with people posting photos and he didn't know how to share them on the page, he put a call out for people to help him and he got volunteers from all over Australia. So I think there are five people that help him going through the images on the page and posting them up, including somebody in the States, I think, who kind of does the overnight shift because they just get so much material. Anyway, this young lady over here, Denise, and another young lady that couldn't make it here today, Kim, from Western Australia, they helped me out, you know. If it wasn't for them, that book wouldn't have been here today, yeah. Mm. yeah I didn't have any idea. I, I had to ask them all these different things all the time, you know. The launch wasn't your usual literary affair. Dan McIntosh told some bush yarns, including one about how he became a cook, when opportunity came to him, quite literally, on a plate. Yeah, well, I was only 15 and I was working at a place called Kyabra over near Quilpie in Queensland, rouseabouting in the shearing sheds, and the cook got drunk and got locked up in jail in town. <laughs> anyway, they came and asked me would I cook them a meal, you know. So we goes over to the kitchen and there was plenty of fruit and veggies, but there was no meat. So we had to go over to the sheep yard and get two sheep. Then we had to kill them and dress them and, you know, cut the back legs off them for some roast for the night. And, I still remember it was three o'clock the next morning, Steve Johnson, the shearing contractor, woke me and asked me what I'd like to be the new cook because the other one wasn't coming back. 
and I just couldn't believe it, you know. And I thought, well, I suppose so, and I was working at the time, and I was only getting $16 a, a week rousy in, and went up to 118 doing the cook, and I thought I was a millionaire. In the years since, Dan McIntosh has worked his way across Northern Australia, a lifestyle, he says, that brings riches beyond measure. It's just under one million acres, man, blue, yeah. You know, some of the paddocks are further out, out the back here, you know, they're huge, like they could be up to 150,000 acres each, and it's easier to bring the cattle to this yard than, you know, we camp here, we get straight at work at, you know, at the break of dawn, and. And it's a lot easier if we are at the station had to travel out here, we would have to get up two hours earlier. So it's easy to do it all from here and the, the young fellas and young girl out here, they love it. Everyone's always very relaxed, but I think it's just the mass, like there's everything so much bigger. So much bigger. It's nice out here, you know, it's peaceful and, you know, there's no hassles and, you know, you wouldn't work anywhere else. It's beautiful, I, you know, I like it, yeah. His itinerant lifestyle, a month or two here and there, provides ample opportunity to pursue his love of photography. These often remote locations are home to working lives and sites hidden to most Australians. And up in the Gulf Country, there's a lot of spots and it's really pretty, you know, it doesn't matter if it's dry or wet up there, you really get some good photos, yeah. Dan McIntosh has always enjoyed taking photographs, but he was spurred on a few years back when some of his photographs took top honours at a local show. He believes his Facebook site is so popular because of its authenticity. Most of the photos, or nearly 100% of the photos anyway in the book, are taken by amateur people, just the old average Joe and the kids. A lot of photos in there were taken by kids and they'd never get the opportunity for people to see them like that. A lot of them are not photoshopped, which is good because it's Photoshop photos don't tell the true story. It's what you see out of the... You know, the native eye is what it tells the story. There's nothing artificial about it at all. There's not, they're not professional photographers. They don't have any particular barrow to push. They're just people sharing the parts of their day that make them happy or make them sad. Um, and I think that's really powerful. I don't have the luxuries of what, what town people do with the showers and everything, you know, it's, it's cold water, but, you know, that's part of life in the bush, yeah. A lot of city people, they, they can see how we live. They just thought it was a big red inland country and just a few kangaroos and that was it. But it was more to that, yeah. They see the cow getting killed in the paddock for meat for the kitchen and, yeah, they've only ever seen it come out of a wool shop in the supermarket and, like, kids actually milking cows by hand. The city people, you know, and the milk comes out of a carton. I like portraits of the people on the stations and that, you know, that's my favourite, and the, the landscape too, but the faces tell the story, yeah. I reckon they do, yeah. A lot of them you can see the, the hard times written in the face and that, yeah. Because they're pretty quick to pose up for a photo if you've got the camera, yeah. Thirty odd years now I've been doing the cooking for and yeah, every year you say this is the last year but then when you get a new, another new stock camp come in and you know, they keep you active. You know, they're like your own children and yeah, it's a great life, yeah. Yeah, always been sort of pretty happy and jovial sort of a bloke. He's always good to be around. The oldest of the young team is just 22. So Dan McIntosh is also something of a mentor figure. I'll always go to him for advice if you need it, for sure. But uh, yeah, always pretty pretty handy to have around, you know. He's um, more, never short of a word either or a joke, so it's always pretty good. He provides a lot of um, entertainment to us all at night and when we get back, so definitely sparks us up a bit when we get back and we've had a big day, so. It's a lot of fun. Stand back. Stand back for explosion. It's good, you know, like, they keep you young and that. You know, I'm my uncle cookie to them, you know, so, no, it's great. For the man known as Cookie, the book is a welcome change of fortune. 
last year he had a cancer scare. And his parents, part of the reason why he went onto Facebook, died suddenly a day apart. But now he's got the book in his hands. I think he's as proud as punch, you know, and he's really pleased with people in it. And they are all amazingly excited as well. They've all been sharing things onto their social media of themselves holding the book, and it's just a really special thing. It's been a real privilege. It has, yeah, no, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.